Chin for the invitation. I'm very happy to be invited by you and to get this chance to talk about um, design education and uh, the role of concepts and of nature. Um, in this talk, I'm not going to present a lot of answers. I'm just asking some questions and trying to make some sense of some educational experiences that I've gone through in the past. So let us consider three kinds of situations in which nature and concepts can be invoked in a design context. So theorizing about design, one could investigate the nature of design concepts. Philosophizing more generally, one could ask what is the concept of nature and the answer to that question would probably be different in different cultures. And Designers often work from natural inspiration. Let's start from that last situation and consider how designers, for example, might consider inspiration from leaves and trees in shading public spaces. This is an example that I simply picked because I experienced it last week. So these are some examples of leaves inspiring architecture from India, Australia and Dubai. And I think there's something cultural going on here. If you understand Western design education, you may probably expect at least two of these ideas in a design studio not to survive the next tutorial. Um, so I put this slide together two days ago and coincidentally yesterday on my Facebook page I saw a friend of mine out of Hong Kong who's running a successful architecture practice who is now building a series of these buildings coincidentally inspired by leaves. Guanyin或者树可以通过许多方式表达图中的案例分别来自印度、澳大利亚和迪拜在这其中可以发现文化所造成的差异 如果你理解西方设计的教育，你会明白，在一个西方设计工作室中，图片中的其中的两种构思会被设计总结所否定。我两天前将他们拼在了一起，巧合的是，当我在查看Facebook页面时，我发现我的一个在香港外开建筑事
poorly thought out and naive on the one hand, and on the other hand, maybe these are ideas that have merits, but in frameworks that for us as foreigners are very difficult to understand. And making that distinction between simply poor ideas and ideas that are maybe valuable and interesting in ways that we don't understand, that is very difficult for us. So, um, obviously from the other perspective, from the Chinese perspective, it's equally challenging. Okay? Our students also have a very hard time adjusting to our foreign ways of uh, re-emphasizing, encouraging or discouraging certain types of ideas. So there are cultural premises in the equation which we very rarely talk about. And I am trying to talk about them today. Uh, one trouble is that the cultural premises of this part of the world are already largely lost in the current student generation. So in so, to some extent this is even an, an excavation of bringing back some uh, more traditional um, patterns of thought. 这张评论的截图中一些积极的评论主要来自于亚洲的国家显然不同的文化背景下所获得自然的概念灵感的方式是不同的将一种文化的这种方式引入到另一种文化之中就会产生问题以中国为例过去几十年间基于整个国家普
马季将会在随后讨论现象学，希望他能够让我们明白，这与所有的设计欣赏论，包括中国式的欣赏论，存在着紧密的联系。In industrial design and more specifically in automotive design, the notion of a concept or a concept car is even more specific. And here it's understood specifically as something produced not with a realistic view to mass production, but with a view uh, to speculate and investigate about new technical possibilities as well as new possibilities of making products more attractive and desirable. So concepts are said to inspire design in order to be finally realized as products um, that are somehow derived from that initial concept. 在工业设计，尤其是汽车设计中，一个概念设计不仅仅被理解为从实际角度出发可以批量生产的产品，而且还被理解为从思索角度去探求新技术的应用，以及如何制造出。更加吸引人且让人满意的汽车，概念产品被认为是灵感化的设计，是为了最终作为一个源于概念化灵感的产品被人们而被人们所接受。The general pattern that seems to be at work here is that of a syllogism, uh, you know, from Aristotelian uh, reasoning. Uh, necessarily, linear progression, uh, normally uh, described as minor premise, major premise. And conclusion, with in some ways the major and the minor premise being the designer and the uh, uh, the concept manifesting themselves in a conclusion, i.e., the product. 在这里有一种普遍的推理公式在起作用，即一个次要前提加上一个主要的前提，从而得出结论。次要在前提在这里是指概念，主要前提是指设计推动力，结论即产品。这个过程是单向的，其推动力就是从设计。设计师通过将概念转化为产品的设计过程中得到的。This is also captured in the Western notion of、uh, the artist being kissed by a muse, a poet in this case receiving inspiration from an invisible angel, resulting in a piece of poetry on the paper in front of him. This act of translation between an input impetus from an external origin. Uh, to a piece of art that seems to be critical, and we are irritated when the relationship between the concept, concept at the beginning and the product at the end is too immediate, too literal. We expect the artist in between to act as a translator, and that act of translation seems to be the contribution of the designer or the artist for which the artist or the designer is appreciated. So the notion of a concept as something that is received from an outside uh, is, uh, and which comes to a concrete fruition through the process of translation or gestation, that's really where this idea of、uh, the concept comes from. We can also get from the artist's name to the Western concept of this concept. In this picture, 一位诗人从一个看不见的天使处获得灵感，从而写下了他面前的诗句。在西方设计思想中，这种方式的转化是极其重要的。当概念与产品之间的相互关系变得非常无趣，并且缺少如诗般吸引力、吸引力时，我们会感到厌恶甚至恼怒。概念就是从外部世界所提取的观念上的东西，通过一系列的转化与酝酿的过程，成为具体现实的产物。这也是概念这个词的由来。Uh, we speak of the moment when a female is getting pregnant. As the moment of conception, and that follows the same image, receiving something from an external source that comes to a fruition or a manifestation in the form of a new new organism. So, this image seems to be central to Western thought and Western artistic and design creation.、Uh, but what about Chinese? Uh, the Chinese、uh, equivalent. This is something that、uh, interests me immensely. It doesn't seem to follow the same pattern. So、um, I believe that the differences that I experience, for example, in the design studio, can be explained when we look at our different worldviews in our cultures. And that's what I would like to explain. 妇女受孕的瞬间，同时她成为了一名孕妇，这也同样遵循这个观念。如今。为什么这种西方设计思想中的核心观念在中国设计的思想中却少之又少
我会通过不同文化中世界观的不同的形成方式来解释这个问题。So the Western world is said to be metaphysical. There is something beyond the physical domain, according to Plato. So we assume that the physical world is determined by something behind or beyond the world of appearances, the phenomenolo phenomeno phenomenological world. So this goes back to Plato's cave, where original forms and ideas are outside in a domain that is inaccessible to us. We are existing surrounded by uh, imperfect manifestations and projections of those ideal forms. True beauty, true friendship, and so on, uh, exist in some domain that we cannot ac access, but that domain determines everything we experience. This is common in the Abrahamic religions in the Western world, Judaism, Islam, and Christianity, and it has been called one behind the many metaphysics uh, or two-tiered metaphysics. This is uh, the blueprint for uh, many ideas in the Western world in modern thinking, molds behind products uh, in industrial production, blueprints behind buildings and architecture, classes behind instances in object-oriented programming and so forth and so forth. The pattern appears again and again. So, when religious doctrine was replaced with uh, science doctrines, this general idea was maintained. Science now explains phenomena in the world uh, that we uh, can observe and perceive in terms of abstract principles, laws of nature, and so forth, which are again to be taken to exist behind perceived phenomena. So, in the East, this pattern is traditionally downplayed. It exists, but it is downplayed. It is not emphasized. A uh, good illustration of the Chinese equivalent of this Western metaphysical model is the Buddhist metaphor of Indra's net that I'm trying to show on the right-hand side of the slide. This image is uh, basically a spider's web in the morning filled with thousands of little dewdrops, and each dewdrop contains a reflection of all the other dewdrops, which contain reflections of all the other dewdrops. And there is an interrelatedness and a mutual arising that comes out of this net itself. There is no external origin. It comes out of itself. And this is captured in the Chinese word for nature, ziren, which means that which comes out of itself which is very different from the Western worldview, which is predicated on an impetus of an external origin. So, um, another phrase in this context is uh, one who, the myriad things, the, uh, all the things in the world, all the living creatures existing on par at the same level. No hierarchy, no external um, authority, if you will. 西方的世界观是超自然唯心主义，它假设物质世界是其背后的某种某种力量决定的。这回到了柏拉图和他的洞穴理论中，在洞穴中的人们只能看到洞穴外的事物，在洞穴中的投影。这种理论观念认为，我们所认识的事物只是那些在我们拿不到的世界中真正完美的事物的残像。这些完美的事物包括真正的美、真正的友谊等等。这与西方世界的三大宗教——犹太教、伊斯兰教、基督教有着共同的特点。它被称作唯心主义一元论或者唯心主义同源论，这就是在西方现代观念中人们思想的蓝图，包括工业产品背后的模具、建筑背后的设计图，以及在目标导向编程中许多个例背后的总类别。当宗教教义被科学教条所取代之后，这种蓝图仍然存在。科学能够解释那些我们通过观察而精炼出的普普遍的自然法则，却不能解释其背后每一个具体现实的自然现象。在东方，这个问题被传统所弱化了。一个佛教的隐喻可以用来很好的阐述西方这种思维模式相对应的中国式的思维模式。在这个图片中，清晨，一张蜘蛛网上覆盖着许多露珠，每一个露珠都被反射在其他的露珠中，其他的所有露珠也都反射在每一个露珠中。这些代表着相互过、相互联系、相互依存，并且存在于整体的辩证关系。中国关于万物的描述也也也表现了这层关系。世界万物都存在于一个层级之一
一个层级之中，在这样的一种关注特殊个体的认知面前，等级制、单向的因果关系以及抽象描述都被弱化了。So we have different narratives in different cultures about how things come about. In the West, the world is seen as created, created. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and so forth. And likewise, architects and designers create along a linearly causal path. A affects B. This is different in traditional Chinese thought, uh, as expressed in this notion of Zuren, uh, that which comes out of itself. A affects B, and A uh, and B affects A, and so forth. Or just A recreates A, recreates A. An apple creates a tree, creates an apple, creates a tree. No external causation. So this kind of circular and recursive relationship is very problematic uh, when you try to deal with it with Western linear logic. Linear, the Western logic is linear, and when it comes to this kind of phenomena, uh, we run into problems. And you can easily find this out when you propose a circular reasoning structure to your postgraduate thesis. Supervisor it will immediately be shot down because it cannot survive. Scientific 即A引發B,B引發A的循環方式,這種循環往往復的關係對於西方的現代科學思維來說存在很大的問題,你可以在你的畢業論文中看求這種類似循環問題的答案,並且就此與你的導師爭論一番。Uh, has nothing to do with there not being any circular phenomena. I believe the world is full of circular phenomena, but science is based on, uh, on the intent to describe phenomena uh, conclusively and completely. And you cannot describe something completely and conclusively, conclusively if that thing is going on. You have to stop it. You have to break the circle into linear parts that you can describe in terms of a syllogism, basically, and in terms of A affecting B. This is not because there is no circular and linear phenomenon. The reason is that science is based on a complete description of the phenomenon, but we cannot describe the phenomenon with a complete description of the phenomenon. Therefore, scientists will break the circle into linear parts that you can describe in terms of A affecting B. This is not because there is no circular and linear phenomenon. The reason is that science is based on a complete description of the phenomenon, but we cannot describe the phenomenon with a complete So the scientific denial of circularity is of course in itself inconsistent. For example, I tried to look up the word mass in a dictionary of science and I found it defined in terms of matter. And then I went down to look up matter and I found it defined in terms of mass. Um, more generally we can say that by excluding extra natural causation such as uh, the assumed existence of God, for example, and by excluding that from science, science approaches the universe as a closed system within which all causation must be internally self-referential, hence circular, which is a, a way, a pattern that is denied by science itself, so it's inconsistent. matter. 接着我查找 matter, 发现它的定义里包含 mass 至进一步我们可以说 通过将超自然的自然因素排除在外 科学将世界定义为一个封闭的系统 在这里所有事情的起因都是自发形成的 因此是循环的 So the western world takes the world as caused by a creator who is external and inaccessible uh, but how can such a narrative be justified if we have no way of getting out there and checking if that's the case? This problem is taken care of by the prophets, a selected few to whom the truth is said to reveal itself, as shown on the right. And note that in this context of religious revelation, the written word and script are very 
um, central and authoritative. So if God talks to us through scripture, how can we talk to what is out of this world? We do this by turning the process around. 西方传统往往认为世界它是源于一个外在的一个高高在上不可琢磨的一个造物主这样的话符号表达就成为传达了一个主导的方式因此如果上帝他是在借助这个圣经的文字和我们交流的话那么我们科学家又怎么去和这些地外生物和那些外星人进行交流呢所以我们的文字他们理解不了这个过程就好像我
wake up to rather Asian patterns of reasoning and appreciating architecture, while China at the same time is modernized and uh, imports modern contact, uh, modern modern uh, patterns and thought uh, to the point that it's more Western than many Western people. Uh, this那个由于建筑具有的一种唯一性它欣赏的这些方式也各不相同在中国我们现在看到的就是无尽的一个像坐标者一样的一个建设的一个规划所有的房子都是完全一致的像在这个图片里这样反而使这个整个的环境变得更
So here's my attempt at, at explaining what's going on. This is a triangle uh, called, or sometimes the epistemological triangle. Um, what I'm trying to do now, you have to really bear with me because it's in some ways really strange. I'm trying to explain why abstract representation is a problem and I'm explaining it using abstract representation. But I don't think I have a choice because I'm trying to give a lecture about these ideas. But it's self-contradictory and I acknowledge that. So this triangle here is um, inspired by a German philosopher and mathematician named Gottlob Frege. And this triangle puts into relationship the world, the observer, who wishes to describe the world, and descriptions. This is very interesting in the context of nature and concepts because concepts exist at this side of the triangle. They are descriptions and the triangle isolates that and makes it, interest, makes it possible to make interesting observations about our relationships with the world and the role of descriptions and concepts. So, um, of course this is highly contrived. There are no concepts out of the world. There are no observers or humans outside of the world. This is an artificial separation that um, backfires in all sorts of ways. Now,现在我们来建立一个模型。首先呢,我承认在自己在这里谈这个概念认知的这样一个模型的话,其实我心里是感到自相矛盾的。因为我觉得这个概念的认知往往我们,就是它在现实生活中被过于的强调。我在这里提到它就是可能仅仅是因为这个这个这个讲座可能我讲的话可能会有人会愿意听那么其实这样一个模型它是一个普遍的对事物认知孵化化的一个产物我们先来看一看这个这个三角模型它是德国的哲学家
cultural map to understand these different agendas and interests? Uh, 去建立一个可以通过观察世界得到的一个描述它是属于经验主义式的它主要是源自英国主张对事物进行实践和完成的是实用主义学派它主要是源自美国所谓就是实践就是真理欧洲大陆盛行的是观念论也可以翻译成就
，互相的割离、离散和一个孤立。实际上，他们的彼此联系还是相对来说比较紧密的。呃，对现象的描述，我们说的这个 concept， 世界的这个客观的存在，我们说的 world 和观察的主体是啊、呃，实际上是一体，他们是一个互为始终的一个关系。就是如同这个 PPT 上的图片所看到的，相对于人和世界的这样一个关联，这个 description， 呃，这个对概念这样一个主主观的一个描述归纳，它被嗯被独立出来，这是西方的那个形而上学和和科学的这样一个呃根深蒂固的一个观念，呃，科学就是。比如说对对理论概念的一个人为的一个发掘和提炼，呃，古代的那个印欧语，印欧语的那个 sin sin 的音节，它是它是代表一种，就是代表这个分离的关系，它是一个词头，包括那个那个 s i z e 分裂，还有那个什么，呃，精神分裂症，包括像科学这些词都是都是都是这么来它的词源，呃，甚至包括那个我们说 s h e e t 就是这个这个排泄物。呃，它它也是这样的，因为因为它的它它的那个产生就是它从人体里面掉出，它是一个分离的这样一个动势，呃，所以在在在中国的话，这个情况完全不同，呃，从那个战国到到汉朝，呃，中国的这些这些文人学者就是在著书立说描述这些先贤创造嗯中华文明的时候，嗯。比如说，在这些文献里面记记载那个八卦和汉字的这样一个发明的过程，呃，中国人用的是“做”这个文言词，当然这个词现在已经它的意思已经改变了，呃，这个词的文言意思，嗯，类似于就是一种自然而然的一种一种创生和完善，不是一种一种、嗯、超然的呃，把它、嗯、独立出来，就是想要去去人为的去故意总结的这样一个态度。呃，所以在象征中国的中国传统观念的这样一个图表里面，呃，概念描述和它归纳的世界的这些具体现象是很贴近的。比如说汉字字符的这个，它的就是就这些汉字，我们知道是象形文字，它这些字符就是从图形化的这些自然物里面提取出来。然后他还想要补充的是，这个在这个图里面，这个这个三角模型里面那个 descriptions。在中国的传统里面，它其实其实这个图更像更像右边那个图，它这个嗯两条边被缩短，就是看起来中国的中国的传统观念和美国的实用主义有很大的相似之处，就是都都普遍来说嗯不太重视这个这个 description， 而而相对于比较重视这个人和世界这样一种直接的实用的这样一种联系。So, in uh, these Chinese ideas have been further distilled into uh, Japan, and there is a very interesting example in the uh, traditional Japanese house when it comes to the coexistence of abstract descriptions and concrete objects, and how they are positioned relatively to one another. The modular elements of the uh, Chinese house, the tatami mats, are at the same time a concrete object, but at the same time an abstract unit of measure. Even more interestingly, the first column of the house that is erected is called Tokobashira, and it has no static function, it bears no load. And it is different from all the other columns and all the other elements in the house which are uh, processed highly geometric, very abstract, this column is an untreated tree trunk and it is an appreciation of the particular the particular is played up the abstract is played down there's no other than this one of this kind 呃，中国的这种思想传到日本之后，得到了进一步的一个演绎和发展，尤其是日本的呃禅呃禅宗思想，就是在那个日式的呃宅居里面，就是很多这种榻榻米。它是一种魔术化的一个设计，然后它每每一块尺寸都是一样的，这样的话就可以去丈量这个这个建筑的一个尺寸。呃，他他认为这样一个这样一个设计的理念是，呃，比较是是一种
就是关注事物一种普遍性的，就是一种 general 的一个概念。呃，但是但是与之不同的是，就是呃，房间里那个圆柱体，它是一个壁龛的一个柱子，日语叫传柱。这个东西是呃，就是一棵自然生生长的一棵树，它它在这个房间里面就是呃。既没有这个沉沉重作用，也没有起到建筑上的什么作用。但是这个这，但是每一个房间里面的这个树都是一样，都都是不一样的。所以所以这个树，它它它被人看作是是具有具有唯一性和特殊性的这样这么一个事物。所以所以日本思想的这样，日式美学它可能更加偏爱偏爱这个有特殊性的事物，而不是一种一致统一的。And this is quite analog to the way that the Taihu Rock is appreciated coming out of a lake very close to this campus. This kind of perforated stone, of course, is very particular. Everyone is unique. This rock is appreciated because it allows us to play with the abstract and the particular. And to flip one of them into the other, the abstract and the described and the particular are simply two different ways of looking at something. It has nothing to do with the object in itself. It's a shift in the way we look. So this particular rock can become anything in your mind. Very similar to children lying in the grass, looking at the clouds, seeing elephants and horses and stories, and this is very closely related to the designerly ability to turn anything into anything. So the rock is anything, and at the same time, something very particular. Another example is the Taihu Rock. The Taihu Rock is made of stone. Taihu Rock. 呃，这个每一个呃孔洞斑驳的太阳瓶，它都是一个独一无二的一个事物，呃，就就好像呃一千个读者有一千个哈姆雷特一样，就好像这个太阳石它的它的这个它的这个概念，我们是叫它太阳石，但是每一个太阳石，太阳石它都是千奇百怪的，都是由于我们这个这个观者，这个观察者每个人不一样，所以他看到的不一样，就好像那个儿童在在那个那个。看那个天上的云朵，他可以看的是什么动物啊、大象什么，就是他想他想看的什么，他就是什么。但是我们在概念上，它统一被称为太阳，像一个石头，它是它是 general 的一个一个概念。So there is actually a lot of art, poetry, movies that deal with this problem of conceptual inspiration and abstract script and the confusion of the map and the territory. There are many examples in Chinese poetry, and there's also、uh, one of my favorite movies by、uh, Darren Aronofsky named Pi that deals with exactly that problem. So I recommend that you take a look at this movie; it's mind-blowing. So I try to show you how the notion of concept is derived from a Western understanding of nature, and how these ideas were imported into modern China along with the idea of design. But concepts are not the only way, and certainly not the only correct way of thinking about new ideas. And I anticipate that with growing economic strength of China and growing prestige, Chinese design will soon stop importing foreign design thinking and start to export its own way of appreciating design and ideation. At that time, the Western world may probably have to begin to adjust to Chinese. Paradigms of thought, rather than the other way around that we have seen so far. But for this to happen, our students deserve a redesign of their design education that gives them the vocabulary and the awareness of their own traditional heritage in order to rethink those culturally determined mind frames and to actively respond them. Thank you very much.在那个上一章那个CBT里面，他他主要展示了那个，他他他主要推荐他一部他很喜欢的电影叫那个《P.I.》，啊是那个黑天鹅的导演，知道吗？然后最后他做的是一个总结，就是他的他主要这个这个
本质上还是还是稀释的。所以这些观念随着这个呃现在这样一些涉及理念被带入中国之后，呃，是产产产生了一些一些问题吧，就是。呃，但是他认为研究一个对象的概念，并不是思考上述理念的唯一的方式，必然会有更好的一个替代品。所以说，他认为设计是还原事物的一种本质。呃，而且他希望随着这个中国的呃经济实力和国际威望的一个一个提升，嗯，中国的设计会停止。单向的一个输入，然后同时也要输出自己的自己的设计理念，向向国外输出。嗯，这样的话，西方设计界就会接受，呃，与他们之前所接受到的不同的这样一种新的思想。呃，而且他想，呃，嗯、呃，就是就是就是他认为中国的我我们这一代学设计的学生，就是应该去学会，呃，如何去去。把中国这样一种传统的设计哲学给表达出来，并且有一个领悟到他这样一个意识，所以他们，呃，他认为我们应该认识到这种挑战，然后重新思考这个文化差异下的不同的思维方式，然后做出积极的回应。谢谢大家。